Hi, I'm Arzu Fayazi, and I'm going to be presenting on child and maternal health. About A little about me is that my family is originally from Afghanistan, but now we live in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm going to be a sophomore at the Bryn Mawr School next year. And regarding my career, I hope to go to med school and become a cardiothoracic surgeon. Some extracurriculars I participate in is medical club, mock trial, Princeton Model Congress, I'm head of the Bring Bodies program, which is a tutoring program at my school. I, a, Asian Student Union, I swim, I play soccer, I play the violin in my school's orchestra, and I like to volunteer with refugees in my free time. So what is maternal and child health? Maternal health refers to the health of the mother during pregnancy, childbirth, and the period after birth. The definition of child health is the mental and physical health of the child as in moves through adolescence. The most crucial part is from birth to five years old in children. Why is maternal and child health important? This is important because health is a human right. To create universal health coverage for all citizens and give them access to health, the government of many developing countries need to create a stable and efficient health system for the citizens. But to do so, they need to also fix solutions to internal health government issues, financial issues, and much more. So it goes much beyond health. And in order to find the solution, the root of the problem also needs to be found. And also the mater maternal mortality between developed and developing countries is the largest inequalities in the world. This has to do with the financial ability and access to resources in countries. Also needless deaths that could have been prevented occur every single day because of the inadequate health systems. and they if maternal and child health improves, then it could also improve the mental health of families. The most common causes of maternal and child death is blood loss, high blood pressure, unsafe abortion, difficulties in labor, and indirect causes such as heart disease. The sad part is that most of these causes are preventable. According to the CDC, about 800 women die from preventable reasons related to childbirth and pregnancy daily. And of these deaths, 99% of them occur in developing and third world countries. And 40% of deaths in children are under the age of five or are new newborn. These numbers are alarming because they indicate that third world countries aren't giving women the adequate health care that they need to go through pregnancy and childbirth. There's a gap and underlying problem in the government that isn't being addressed and causing women and children to suffer. Oftentimes, the countries that are most affected by maternal and child deaths are the ones where poverty rates are also extremely high and where there are financial hardships in families. This demonstrates that there's a gap when it comes to giving people on living under poverty proper medical care, which shouldn't be happening because health is a human right. The most common reasons to why the health of mothers and children are in risk include financial instability, a lack of education given to women in school and about their bodies, insufficient healthcare system, and political factors. Third world or developing countries, governments usually don't have enough money to fund the healthcare system and provide their citizens the proper treatment. And sometimes, like especially in the Middle East region, the government is corrupt and they only care about their own wealth rather than their citizens' well-being. So the money is redirecting towards themselves rather than the healthcare system. And in this picture, it's a overcrowded maternity ward. And you can see that because there are so many people, there's insufficient medical supplies and there's not enough medical attention given to each one of the mothers and children. An effective one there's a disregard to the health of women and children is malnutrition. Nutrition is defined as a process of obtaining food that is vital for growth. And micronutrients are defined as vitamins and minerals. And they're usually considered as the building blocks of health. A lack of these nutrients leads to malnutrition. And these consequences include eye deficiency, serious birth defects, stunted growth, and in severe cases, death in mothers and children. Although, although it doesn't seem like consequences such as iron deficiency doesn't seem as serious in countries such as America, if it goes untreated, it could lead to anemia, which is a condition described as a deficiency of red blood cells. And severe anemia during pregnancy could lead to low weight in the baby, poor fetal growth, preterm birth and a heightened risk of death for the mother and child. These risk and death rates are also extremely high among developing countries where they don't have a stable health care system that can identify if there are any problems that could be fixed before it's too late. And they also don't have enough money to afford food that is 
rich in nutrients because usually those types of food is very expensive and therefore the children don't have the resources to grow. In this, this picture, there are children in Africa and because of Africa's living conditions, the access to nutrients is very difficult to find. Because the climate is so dry, their main source of food is wheat and wheat isn't very rich in nutrients. So therefore their, hunt, their height is very stunted because this is where they're supposed to be and you can see how they're not meeting expectations. Maternal deaths is one of the highest in the world in Afghanistan. For every, according to PBS, for every 1,000 births, 17 mothers die, and 90% of the deaths are preventable. The, on the other hand, the U.S. death rate in mothers is less than 0.1 deaths per 1,000 births. This proves that this further proves that there should be given attention to developing countries because needless deaths are happening that could have been prevented. And also, women's access to health restrictions have greatly declined under the Taliban rule, which is a terrorist organization, of their, because of their societal restrictions on gender behavior and relationships. So recently, there has been a, a maternity ward in Afghanistan was bombed by the Taliban um, because they didn't want people having access to it. And my family's from Afghanistan, and we have some members in the government, and it is and they told us that it's obvious the government is corrupt there and they only care about their personal wealth and not how their citizens are doing because a, a child that's just born shouldn't be having to be treated for gunshot wounds and like bomb injuries. It's just not fair. And this is just that the government needs external help, not from the military, but from like advice from the US government, other governments around the world. Afghanistan also has one of the worst child mortality rates in the world. It has been estimated that one out of four children in Afghanistan die before their fifth birthday. And about half of children in Afghanistan under the age of five are stunted due to extreme malnutrition. And of these children, more than 60% of child deaths are, and disabilities are due to that diseases that are preventable with vaccines such as measles. Like my mother's sister, she died when she was three years old because she got the measles and there was no vaccine or there was no medical treatment to help. And so something as simple as diarrhea could kill almost 85,000 kids in Afghanistan annually because there's no attention or medical care given to them. There are multiple steps that could be done to improve health of mothers and children in, in developing countries. First, health organizations could focus on counseling and educated women in countries such as Afghanistan. So they could educate women on their bodies and how to take care of their child or when to, when to see if something's wrong and seek medical attention. They could also um, make community clinics where they could provide expert care at birth with, by professionals and emergency obstetrics care. So in case there is an emergency, there's a solution. And educate young people because in like such places in America, because young people is the future. So if they're educated and they can promote the cause and increase the chances of getting or creating help in the future. And training people in villages and developing countries would also, to be midwives, to be qualified midwives also could help because then if there is home birth, then they could at least know what they're doing and help. For the future, my mother and I are planning to build a school in Afghanistan because as you can see in this picture, it's not really a school. All they have is sitting outside and a blackboard, that's all they have. And we're planning to build a school and provide resources such as school supplies, because in many villages, also girls, especially girls, don't have access to education because of gender inequality, the Taliban restricting them to do so, or a lack of resources. So when the war settles down, we plan to go back and build a school to educate women and school subjects and about their bodies. So hopefully this decreases the mortality rate in women and children, if they knew how to take care of themselves. And I like to thank my mother, Zareen Todd, because she helped me with this and with research. She has made a documentary and a book about women and children in Afghanistan following the Taliban war. So if you would like to read more about this, you could read her book, the title's right here, and watch her documentary. Or if you have any questions, you can email her or you can email me. Thank you.